and action. Okay, so that title was almost how to make an action film. In a sort of ironic way, but I chickened out. This is how I made an action film. It's a very specific film that came out due to a lot of people's free time at the right time and looking to make something cool. Your experience if you make one is going to be a lot different. However, I didn't want to make this your basic making of either. I wanted this to be something deeper, more all-encompassing, a guide to how I made this action short so as to perhaps help with or inspire you to make yours. <laughs> Also, how I made an action film is of course not quite right. Without pretty much everyone involved, it would be a very different beast. Certainly a lesser one. From the cast, crew and post team, this has been shaped throughout by various hands, with myself creatively guiding the ship, as it were. And be aware that again, I am lucky in that I know and even live with people from the industry. For example, not only is Leo a high profile producer with lots of much bigger projects than this under his belt, but he's had so much assistant director experience before he was able to just jump in as my first AD when the original one left last minute. Something he didn't think he was going to do. Are you going to AD this? No. No way. Are you joking? Settle please. Sam. Damn up. One more rehearsal. Okay, we're still rolling. John, let me know when you're set. Action. <laughs> I met Ross and he told me he had an idea of, to make a short film and it was very much like uh, in the likes of the raid and I wanted to see what we could do with bringing Law on board. Yeah, JP told me about this project you wanted to do. It sounds different as Division before and also Jailbreak. Also when you said you'll be the director, I'll be like, okay, let's go, let's do it. Frankly, you can still do a lot of what we did on a lower budget to a point, but if you're going to do it safely, then you should aim for a professional team that can be small with a cast that know what they're doing and have equipment to allow them to do it safely, such as the padding and mats we used for this shot and any time they're really fighting on the floor and the stunt knives we had, a metal and a rubber one, did cost into the hundreds of pounds, but was certainly worth it to both look good on camera and of course be very safe. <laughs> Once we settled on making a short together, I quickly wrote a basic script and we used a small local gym space here in London to start coming up with moves and ideas. The actual action and structure formed very quickly and we would have moved to full choreography earlier were it not for COVID. Over time, as lockdown here eased, we began pre-visualization, the process of actually shooting the film long before we do it and getting everything right, all the camera angles, etc. so that on set we have this sort of visual storyboard. It helps immensely. This space that we used for that was far more suited to our needs and we were able to create basic geometry and practice safely. All in all though, for the whole film, we were only able to spend maybe about 12 to 14 hours collectively on choreography and pre-visualization. That isn't really enough. Especially when we spent a lot of the initial time on a section scene here that was completely cut and reworked due to it just being unworkable in the location we had. Though this did add to the budget early on, it was worth it as we spent less time on set planning shots. Actually, without this, I don't think we'd have been able to get the film done in the two days we had on location. As you know, Ross, we've cut some very cool original sequence, you know, like, I think you should talk about it. The stuff that we cut, I wish it was longer. We choreographed too much for the time we had, and though we knew we could remove chunks, we hadn't the time in the gym to plan which and exactly how we could remove them. As you can see here, we had sections that simply vanished that the guys loved. On set, we had to work out ways to get from one place to another after cutting those sections without any plan. Such as here, where he crawls from one place to another or literally punches Law to get rid of him. It worked, but we lost time that affected how long we had to shoot the end of the film. Toward the second half of our final day, we relied on pretty much single takes to get through it, which led to issues. For example, in this shot, there's a pair of legs that I just scaled in later to remove. We couldn't redo these stab wounds, which might be a little bit wooden feeling. And in this shot, JP's hand goes the wrong way compared to the next one. 
In fact, we only really had an hour to complete all of this at the end of the second day, even after removing all that earlier previs. So that's the nature of indie filming. But then even just polishing up some of the, the movement, you know, you, you, we might get one take on something where it's decent, but you know, we all say, oh, it could be better, but you just don't have the time and the energy because you know you've still got another 80% of the film to go. That actually somewhat explains why, though I like the flow of the edit here, it perhaps feels like the kick comes a little late. We had this insert there to take the focus off law before the kick, but it didn't work due to the continuity of the hand movement, so I had to leave the shot out. Even though we were pressed for time, we did get coverage where we needed it though. On set, I wanted a sort of Spielberg one-shot where it's subtly one take for the dialogue scene. JP comes down, they have the full chat, and then go into the action, all in one go. This was a cool idea, but it drained time since if the action went wrong, we had to do the whole thing again. Also, we lost the nuance of their performances. In hindsight, it was a cool idea, but didn't work. John Muschamp wasn't just our DP, he was our camera operator as well, and had never shot an action film before. I wasn't worried though as he quickly learnt the speed he would have to move at to capture what I wanted and easily worked with, not against, our cast. That's a cat. That's a cat. What we gained from having John versus someone who had worked more in action was a DOP with an eye for drama and colour that hugely raised the production value of the film. Working in action doesn't preclude someone from this skill of course, but we purposely wanted to push away from the style I see in a lot of lower budget action work, both in lighting and movement. I didn't want overly long takes or heavily cut ones, and I didn't shy away from shaky cam but only to a point, and I wanted the lighting to match the dark, almost horror film mood I had in mind. This film is about survival, and I aim for it being sore as an action film, and I think we got pretty close to that. Some directors, they just want to work on the acting and the story, which is completely fine, but then they don't really care about the action. And then you have the other side when they want to take care of the action, but they don't know what they're doing. Okay. That's why like when you made these videos about how to bring the storytelling into the action, with this guy, we, we might do something cool. JP from the first shot is established as being in pain. The way we show Law from the start is as this Terminator-like figure. You immediately guess one is the protagonist and one is the antagonist. And because of that, you inherently want JP to win. So we have to put obstacles against JP. We pull the rug from under him three times. First by him getting the knife and immediately losing it. Second by revealing he cannot escape without defeating Law. And then third by bringing Law back for one final conflict. It is cruel and that's drama. Hopefully it's enticing to watch. My major role and what I was looking for is always giving as much constructive feedback to both Law and JP on. It's like, okay, at this point, you're too clean, dirty it up, make you know your vision or else what story are you trying to tell? And it's always the small things that make a bigger impact. <laughs> When the characters can't talk and use words anymore, as words are not sufficient, they use their fist. It's definitely like a language, and I think that's a big secret that slowly more and more of Hollywood is understanding action is not like a second unit thing. There should be no separation from dialogue if you're trying to tell the story. It's just expressed differently and has a different impact to the audience. In the beginning it starts, you see me blocking, dodging and everything, and at the end it's just pure uh, survival. <laughs> One thing I definitely wanted was, to wherever possible, use practical effects. We didn't entirely ignore CGI, nor would I want to. It was very useful to know we had post VFX work available to us, and we actually made planned use of it. There are four VFX shots in the film. Here is how we did it. So what we're doing is we're making blood bags. So what we've had to do is we had to wash them to get everything off of them so they're ready and nice and dry. Um, and once they've been dried out properly, we've got some fake blood. Then we're going to put it in here, tie a knot in it. We attach a bit of super glue and some fishing wire and we pull it and it explodes out. So yeah, that's what we do on set. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to have your hands up. Yeah. 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 Just do like a live oh. We're only going to get one yeah. shot of this. Okay, here okay, we go. Yeah. So first positions, stand by. Okay, and action! <laughs> <laughs>
Two, one. So the blood wants to come out the other hole when he, when he hit him. I did, I did think it didn't look like one of them ripped. And of course, here is where CGI became invaluable. Also for the costumes, I went out and bought everything. I bought a selection, tried them on, and took back what didn't fit. And then to cheaply maintain a look throughout the two days for the costumes without relying on a continuity person, since we couldn't afford to hire one, we just shot in continuity. That means our first shot was the first shot of the film, and our last film shot the final one. They get dirtier as they go and it looks fine. Post was almost as long as the pre-production phase of the film, especially since we went into various stages of lockdown here in the UK throughout it. After locking the edit, myself, John, Leo and our colorist Vlad had to work remotely on the grade, another concession to COVID, but it worked surprisingly well. For the most part, I left the look of the film to John. He simply knows this stuff better and I trusted his judgment. The film does maybe look a bit dark, but I like that. It's supposed to feel like a horror. We did actually brighten it on the first pass, but frankly, it just didn't have that moody cinematic look we wanted. We also went very granular with it. For example, the color of the reds was heavily worked on, and that final shot we really spent some time with. You can see here just how much it was changed to focus the eye on the door and JP. It's a big wide, so we wanted your eye to still be trained where it mattered. That just left music, for which we were lucky enough to have Chris Mears. With a strong background in percussion, he was able to immediately bring something special. I honestly didn't really know what I wanted. I had ideas, I didn't want it too synthy or too orchestral. My only real reference was sort of Eastern traditional martial art Shaw Brothers meets Nine Inch Nails with a slight Western feel. From that, Chris and I then went back and forth working on perfecting specific moments. Nicholas Rowe took on sound design and sound editing duties, creating an entirely Foley effect base that elevated the action brilliantly. That was our final stage, and then we released it to the world. In the end, I'm happy with what we achieved, and I hope this has been helpful to see for anyone looking to make action cinema. It was a bit of a trial by fire, but one where I went in with all the protections I could muster. I'm definitely lucky with who my friends are, privileged by the fact I was able to save to make the film, and of course, had the YouTube platform I've built to be able to release it on. I don't know what the film will become. I made it for me and for you. I'd like it to be a calling card, but it's really just me putting my money where my mouth is. I had to prove to myself and to everyone else that I could actually do it. And I think I'm ready to graduate to something bigger along the same lines, but we'll see if that happens. It's Saw as an action film. If anyone wants that as a feature, call me. We are here waiting for you. The UK has amazing action stars and also has amazing directors, but an understanding of having a whole team and even a director that understands action, that's much greater rarity. There's the video on demand, etc., etc. I think now it'd be easier to have someone who would be interested to put the money on a small budget feature film and do crazy action film, you know, and start small and go big after the I think the time now is changing, you know, it's changing. You ready, Ross? 